Hey everyone, welcome back to Power Electronics. Uh, so last time we talked about the dual active bridge, or the DAB, and today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about it, but specifically the switching involved with the DAB. So, first of all, we, we introduced, you know, AC power transfer with the DAB, kind of, right, and DC-DC converters, and I thought it would be a good time to introduce this idea of soft switching. So what is soft switching? So really this refers to the reduction or elimination of triangular switching losses or some other losses. So if you recall, we, we derived an equation for switching loss, turn on or turn off. I'll just say on here, which was something like half VDS times ID times the time it takes for the switch to transition from on to off times the switching frequency, right? And maybe you recall something like uh, this picture we drew where we have some transition between on and off, right? So we have some, some current, so this is turning on. So we have some we have some voltage across the switch, right? And when it turns on, that voltage slowly decreases until it reaches something like zero or maybe minus VF, right? And then as it's turning on, the current through it ramps up and it takes some time to do that, right? So this is like I, this is V, right? And it turns out that in this region, we experience this switching loss, right? It's, it's a triangle. So if we look at this equation a little bit more closely, one way we can do this is either to force T on to be really, really small. But again, there's always going to be some finite time to turn that it takes for a switch to turn on or off. So we can't really eliminate that. The switching frequency is always going to be something, right? You can't switch with zero frequency. You're not switching in that case, right? So really what we're trying to do is either reduce this, the voltage across the switch, at the time of switching or the current through the switch at the time of switching to zero, right? So this is called, just, just to be clear, this is what we refer to as hard switching. Right? And if we eliminate this, if we eliminate hard switching, we, we get soft switching basically. So there's kind of, there's multiple ways of doing this. There are kind of topological ways of achieving this. There are control ways of achieving this, but there's kind of two flavors, maybe three if you want to be specific. There are kind of two, two distinct flavors, right? So we can either have zero current switching, zero voltage switching, or kind of a combination of the two. Right, so usually we call zero current switching ZCS, ZCS, whatever you want to say, and zero voltage switching ZVS, right? This is a common way of referring to it. So again, just to be clear, this ZCS occurs when we force the current through switching device to be zero or close to zero. And I'm going to write that in kind of this, this way. We force or allow it to happen, right? So there are situations where the current just happens to be zero. And if we choose to switch it at the right time, we can get zero current switching. And on, on the other side, we have zero voltage switching. It's a similar kind of idea. We either force or we allow, right? So forcing is, you know, kind of construct the converter in a specific way and do some fancy stuff to force the voltage to be zero. or there's some specific situation in the operation of the converter that just makes the voltage zero naturally. So we force or allow the voltage to go to zero. When we want to switch, we either have the current or the voltage to be zero. So we can achieve soft switching either through control or uh, through topologies.
And topology, I, I just mean a specific arrangement of electronic devices, right? Or electrical devices, right? So we can change the circuit or we can change the control, how we choose to turn those devices on or off. And this is really what I want to look like. Let's look how soft switching relates to the DAB. So to, to do soft switching, right, it's related to understanding voltages and currents. So we have to look at the voltages and currents of the switches in the DAB. So with the DAV, the voltages, right, if you recall, are defined by the input and output voltage, right? So the voltages of the switches are defined by the input and output voltages. And the currents are defined by the inductor current. IL, right? So I've just redrawn the DAB here for your convenience and I've labeled a few things. So again, we have two active bridges. We have the primary bridge, the secondary bridge, and I've just labeled them with numbers on the primary side, letters on the secondary side. We have the inductor current, right? All, all this stuff. And maybe just to help you out, we can draw the, the voltages as well. So typically we define these, these voltages V1 and V2 and they're created by the switches. So looking at V1 and V2 will help us understand what the voltages across the switch are going to be. All right, so very quickly. The way we typically operate the DAB is with phase shift control, right? So we can operate it at some frequency and then just adjust the phase of the secondary side relative to the primary side and operate both these bridges at 50% duty ratio, All right? So on this graph, it looks something like we have TS, TS over two. And then phase shifted from this, we have the phase shift, which, and I'll call this phi, right? Or DTS, whatever you want to say. You can define this however you want, but I'll just use phi for now to indicate there's a phase shift. So what do we have? For V1, I'll draw it in blue, 50% duty ratio goes from VG to minus VG. All right, so we have VG and minus VG. V2 is just a phase shifted version of this, right? So we have V out over here, we have VG over here, or V in. We ba basically just have a phase shifted square wave, right? So in this region it's positive, and here it's negative, right? And over here it is also negative. So it goes from V out to minus V out. And we can label which what we can label which switches are on, right? So in this period, well, we have positive VG for V1. That means that Q1 and Q4 are on, right? And if we have a negative voltage for V2, it means that VB and VC are, or Q QB and QC are on. And then over here again, we still have Q1, Q4 are on, but now because V out is positive. That means that QA and QD are going to be on. And then over here, the primary side switches, right? So we're going to have Q2 and Q3, but still QA and QD. And then finally, Q2, Q3, and back to QB, QC. Cool. And again, just to, just to reiterate, we can draw the current as well, the inductor current, right? Because it's kind of like the important thing. So again, this phase shift control results in this weird trapezoidal waveform for the current, right? So the way I drew it last time looks something like this. So we have this region where the slope is very high, and then a region where the slope is very low related to the difference between these two voltages. And then it flips, right? So we have a high slope region and then a lower slope region again, right? And that results in this trapezoidal waveform. And that's what the inductor current looks like. So the voltages are relatively straightforward, right? So when Q1 and Q4 are on, for example, right? That means the voltages across them are gonna be zero. And then conversely, 
If Q1 is on, that means that Q3 is exposed to VG, right? Q3 will be off and Q1 is on. This will see VG. Similarly, when Q4 is on, the voltage across it will be zero, right? But Q2 will be exposed to VG and vice versa. So over here, we kind of have the same thing. The voltages for QA are going to go between zero and VG. And that's the same for all of them, right? However, the current through these devices is going to be related to IL, right? So we can kind of see where these transitions happen. So, right, we have TS over two, we have TS, and of course there's this phase shift. Bye. So just using this information, I want to look a little bit deeper at the secondary side just for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this secondary side bridge and just have an, an image of what the uh, of what the current will look like. Okay, and I also want to think about the the current. So first I'm going to draw the assumed positive IL, right? So this is going to be IL of T, right? That's going to flow in this way. I'm just going to define it flow in this way and out this way, right? And if we think about the current, the shape of the current, just to remind you, I mean, this is literally just a copy. The current looks something like this. Great. Okay, so let's just mark, you know, the different regions where the switches are on. I'm, I want to highlight a specific point. Specifically, I want to look. I want to look right here at this transition, right, right over here, because we're actually switching the switches at this point, right? We have Q. A, QB, QC, and QD. So over here, in this time period, QB and QC are on, right? These, these are on. And then over here, we want QA and QD to be on, right? So right here is the transition where they switch. So I want you to notice, in this region, we have positive current, right? Just by the, this generic waveform, we have positive current in this region, right? So it means that current is flowing in this way. Maybe I'll use a uh, different color, I'll use blue. So right just before this, this time period, I'll call it T1. So let's say T1 minus, we have current flowing here, right? It's flowing, QC is on, right? And QB is on, right? So we have, current kind of flowing like this. Now, when we turn Q, C, and Q, B conduct at this region, right? So right at T1, we turn off Q, B, and Q, C. So when we turn these guys off, let's say it happens instantaneously, QA and QD haven't started conducting yet necessarily, right? We typically leave some time. There is some time, which we call dead time, between QB and QC being on and QA and QD being on, right? So we could say in this, right at this instant, nothing conducts, right? We don't allow, or we don't have any switches on. Maybe a better way of saying this is no, no FETs conduct. Right, right at this time period. So let's just look at what happens when we do that, right? What happens to the circuit? So QA, they're all off, right? QA, QB, all of them are off. Instead, what we have are just basically four diodes and caps, a cap and diode network. Just before time t equals t1, what do we have? Well, this was off, right? So initially, this is going to have V out, and this is going to have zero volts across it. And similarly over here. So here we have zero volts, and this is going to be V out. Now we have this current flowing in this direction with two caps, right? So what is it going to do? It's going to start discharging this, so this is going to go towards zero. And this is going to go towards VG, or V out, sorry. 
this is going to go towards the uh, V out, and this is going to go towards zero. So we have this situation where we've turned off the switches, and the inductor current itself is naturally changing the state of the capacitors and diodes, right? So eventually, what's going to happen? Eventually, the diodes dA and dd will turn on, right? Because this will tend to go towards zero, or we could say it goes up towards the uh, the negative forward voltage drop of this diode and forces it on. So simply by waiting, the diodes of the bridge naturally turn on, right? So there's this natural commutation. Right? So we basically, we just kind of have to wait a little bit and then these diodes turn on. Why does that help us? Well, think about what happens when these diodes turn on. Basically, what happens is they turn into voltage sources, right? So the voltage now across each of these FETs, if the diode is conducting, is going to look like this, right? It's going to look like VF. It's going to be forced to VF, right? So there's some current flowing through here. So now, the voltage across across the FET, let's say QA, is something close to VF, right? We can kind of choose if we want to fully turn on the diode or not, but again, that's a little more subtle. But basically, QA is going to have a low voltage across it. So thinking back to our equation for switching loss of turning it on, We're going to have half. Now we're going to have VF instead of V out, and we're going to have, let's say, I, right? So I is when we turn on the switch, I L is going to commutate from the diode to the FET, right? So we're going to have I L T on, however long it takes to do that. And actually, the length of time that it takes to switch is going to be dependent on the voltage across it, and because it's low, it might be faster. And then the switching frequency, right? So we've changed this simply by allowing the diode to turn on. We've changed this voltage from, say, V out to VF, right? And VF is much smaller than V out in most cases, right? So by doing this, we can reduce the switching loss on turn on. So in other words, we get zero voltage switching or near zero voltage switching on turn on. Right, so on turn off we don't really get the benefit, but when we oh, sorry <laughs> on turn on, right? So when we turn off, we don't get this benefit. Really, it occurs because the inductor current happens to be in the correct direction when we're turning this thing off, right? So if we look over here, the current is positive. The current is flowing into this bridge, right? Positive current is flowing into this bridge, which will naturally turn on these diodes, right? Turn on QA and QD or DA and DD. And we can kind of just think about it in the same way for the secondary side, right? So I'll, I'll call this over here T2. The same thing happens at T2, right? So same for T2. But instead of QA and QD, it's going to be for QB and QC. ZVS turn on. So that's for the secondary side. The primary side is exactly the same, right? In terms of zero voltage switching for turn on. So I've kind of breezed over it. This is really just the, the main idea. And you can come up with uh, some more complex equations. Maybe if you if you want to imagine uh, what's going on at this transition, we can, we can think about it a little bit more. So what do we have? We have Call this COSS A, and this is COSS C, right? This is DA, this is DD. And we're going to have 
high L flowing in here. And this goes off to the second to the secondary side. So we're changing the state of these two switches, right? So this this is going from uh, this is going from V out to zero, and this is going from zero to V out. So to affect this change in voltage, we can think about this current putting charge into these caps, right? And you can kind of think of these caps as in being in parallel because this is like the AC current charging this. So if you want to think about the delta V, which is V out, right? And this is going to be equal to the change in charge, right? Delta Q over C, right? And this happens to be the C is going to be COSS A plus COSS C. So to do this, so we're going to have V out. Delta Q is going to be IL times the time required, how much time we have to wait. So I'll just say IL uh, TD for like the dead time over COSS A plus COSS C, right? So basically using this, we can figure out how much time, right? And then I'll just call it C equals like over here, right? So basically this, this is kind of how you'd figure out how much time you have to wait before you turn on the switches to achieve ZVS, right? So this is kind of just a quick way. Obviously it will get more advanced the deeper you look into it, but this is kind of the rough idea. And there's a little bit of a trade-off here too, right? Because you could extend the time a little bit more, allow the diode to conduct, but then diode conduction is typically worse than the FET conduction, right? So the conduction loss may increase a little bit. So you have to be careful. And we can kind of see here, that this length of time is going to be dependent on the current IL. IL is directly related to the output current, right? So that's also going to vary. So we could say this is this is load dependent, right? So we have to be careful. We have to precisely program these times or automatically update these times as the converter operates in order to actually achieve soft switching. Cool. So that, that was like ZVS, and that's like a typical thing you can do for uh, for dabs. But there's also uh, zero current switching, right? So I just want to briefly look at that as well to, to show you what you might do for zero current switching for the dab. So I'm just going to bring back that generic current waveform of the dab. So again, we have... So if we think about this current, we have this high slope, low slope, high slope, low slope. Cool. So what I want you to notice here, zero current switching, maybe that should bring to mind zero crossings, right? And we have two of them, right? We have one zero crossing here and one zero crossing here. So maybe to get zero current switching, we can utilize these zero crossings, right? We can switch the switches directly at those zero crossings. What I want to point out, this prevents us from using phase shift modulation to control the output voltage. Right, so before we're controlling the phase, this phi to control the power flow, Instead, we use the phase shift to control zero current switching. So, I mean, you can still control the output voltage by changing the frequency, but we won't get into that. Basically, what I'm trying to highlight is that this is a control method to achieve zero current switching. So, what happens? What happens if we switch right at these zero crossings? Well, the current waveform changes, right? So, if we do this, if we transition right at the zero crossing, it's going to look a little bit different, right? So now we have, we still have this region of high slope. And then right when the current hits zero, we're going to switch our bridge, right? And then we'll rise up with a lower slope and then again, switch again. And right when the current hits zero, we're going to change 
we're going to change the bridge, right? Switch again, right? So by doing this, we switch at zero current. Right, and this is a valid way of getting zero current switching. Let's just let's just uh, think about this again. Let's redraw what the what switches are doing what. So over here we had QB and QC. Over here was QA and QD. Again, this is QA and QD, and this is QB and QC again over here, right? So by doing this we get zero current switching turn off for Q, QB and QC at this edge and ZCS turn on for QA and QD. And then over here we get zero current switching turn off for QA and QD, and zero current switching turn on for QB and QC. Turns out that this actually only occurs for the secondary side when VG is greater than V out. So you only get this when VG is greater than V out, basically. So yeah, this is like just an interesting modulation. So this is a new modulation to achieve soft, soft switching. Achieve soft switching, specifically zero current switching. And that's kind of what it would look like. There are other situations where you can get zero current switching and we'll look at that for different topologies. I just wanted to introduce soft switching and apply it to the DAB. So note, this is actually in in one of my friend's thesis, theses, well, his thesis, his master's thesis. And you can check it out if you want. His name's Amar Amin. And this was for a transformerless dab for point of load applications. And I'll put the link in the description because I use this for a bit of a reference. And he describes soft switching in his thesis. And I found it quite helpful. So yeah, if you want to check it out, it's free to check out. The more papers you read, the better. The more academic papers you read, the better. So please go do it if you're interested. And maybe it'll help you do your own research or your own uh, your own stuff. Just be sure to, to cite it. Cool. So thanks for your time. That's the dab with some soft switching. And we're going to go on to more AC power transfer converters. And basically soft switching will be a part of all of them because it turns out that soft switching occurs kind of naturally for AC converters, right? When you when you go plus and minus. Maybe we'll look at some quasi-resonant converters to see how swap, soft switching works for those because that's more of a topological solution. But yeah, in any case, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.